Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. Today we're going to be talking about foil characters and how you can use foil characters in your novel. So a foil character is a character whose qualities and traits contrast and therefore highlight the protagonist's qualities and traits. The term actually has a really interesting origin. It comes from an old jewelry making technique where you would put foil behind a jewel to make the jewel shine more. And likewise, literary foils reveal something about the main character that the reader might not otherwise notice. So let's talk about what a foil character can do. The first thing they can do is put a spotlight on the protagonist's qualities. This is probably the most obvious one. Foil characters primarily serve to contrast the main character. So by giving them traits that oppose the main characters, those aspects of the protagonist become much clearer. So classic examples here would be intuitive versus logic characters, such as Kirk versus Spock, or daring versus cowardly, like Frodo versus Sam. A lot of iconic duos are foils. Um, if you'd like more examples of kind of iconic duo characters and how they're foils to each other, we've got more listed in our blog post linked in the description. There are many, many more of these traits can be anything as long as they oppose and therefore contrast each other. A classic example is Sherlock Holmes versus John Watson. They work together to solve crimes, but they operate very, very differently. Watson is very pragmatic and modest, and this really accentuates Sherlock's confidence and eccentricities, while Sherlock's unconventional methods contrast Watson's very by-the-book approach. We can actually kind of see the brilliance in both characters by pairing them together. The next thing a foil can do is actually serve as antagonist. Antagonists are actually often foil characters. Because the protagonist and the antagonist are directly pitted against each other on opposite sides of the conflict, this can really highlight the two characters' contrasting qualities. Sometimes they also have shared qualities that can then highlight the ways that they are also extremely different. You know, there's that classic trope where like a movie villain will tell the protagonist, you're just like me, and then the protagonist will be like, I'm nothing like you, and they'll kind of utilize their moral strength or their compassion or their bonds with others to overcome the antagonist. Foils can also put unusual protagonists in context. If you're writing a story that takes place outside of our contemporary world, for example, historical fiction or fantasy or sci-fi, sometimes we need a foil character to highlight how odd the protagonist actually is. In one of these settings, we need context to understand what the normal is and therefore what goes against the grain. So a foil character who represents the normal can help us understand why the protagonist's attitudes oppose conventions of the time or place. A great example is Meg and Joe March from Little Women. While all the girls in the book act as foils, Meg and Joe are probably the strongest example of this. Meg is very rational and traditional, whereas Joe is tomboyish and impulsive. Meg happily aligns herself with the conventions of the time, whereas Joe decrees the idea of getting married and wants to pursue her dreams of becoming a writer. Because we have one character who represents what is traditional for the time, it highlights that Joe's ambitions and values are outside the norm. Foils can also externalize the hero's internal conflict. Imagine you have a character who is a princess. She's the future queen in waiting, and she's bound by her royal duties and responsibilities, yet she has a strong desire for independence and freedom and kind of just wants to live her own life. Then we can also imagine her foil character, her mother, the current queen, who's trying to convince her daughter to take her duties more seriously. In this case, the mother, the foil character, highlights the princess's internal conflict. Should the princess run away and be free or stay and be loyal to her kingdom? The first option is appealing to her as what she wants, but there are emotional stakes now because if she were to do that, she'd be letting down her mother. So in this case, the foil character, the mother or the queen, is not just highlighting the protagonist's internal conflict, she's actually creating it. The final thing a foil character can do is provide or create an environment that the main character can react to. Now, usually a foil takes the form of another character, but sometimes the setting itself can be a foil. If a character just does not fit into their setting, perhaps the setting um, goes against their values, say you've got this really free-spirited character working a corporate job in the big city, that clash itself can highlight the character's traits just the way that a foil character would. So a great example here is Madame Bovary, where the protagonist, Emma, yearns for a more exciting and luxurious life than she has living in the French countryside. Her desire for wealth and beauty contrasts with the realities of her 
kind of just humble countryside life. And the friction between her and her rural setting is actually driving the plot forward as Emma goes to drastic means to live out these dreams and live far beyond her means. So these are all different ways that foils can really be a doorway to complex characterization. It can be like holding up a mirror to a character, showing us something that wouldn't really be perceptible if the character existed on their own. We really need context to be able to understand a character and that's what foil characters provide. I would love to hear what your favorite classic pairing of foil characters is. I think I have to give it to Kirk and Spock just because I really grew up on Star Trek. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye.